العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So my very very much dear students, uh, this topic of uh, COPD and asthma, actually we finished it, but I you need some little revision. Some questions came in between after my lecture on asthma. I tried to answer some of the people and there were many questions, so I could not answer. But, but now I will answer them, many of them. It's a revision. The slides which you got from Dr. Zainab or from the e-platform, that, that is the slides for today. But I added many slides in between just for the sake of revision. Rakke Zashoya. Concentrate and focus and nothing more than that. They are not going to come, the repetition, the examination, just a revision. Okay, you go for, further. Now, we have finished this one. Bronchial asthma, we finished. Emphysema, we finished. Bronchitis, we finished. Bronchitis, we finished. But there's a slide showing that we finished. But still, we need some, some clarity, some questions, some queries. Show uh, asila lazim, we need an answer. Okay, now, <clears throat> remember this one. This is the uh, this is the trachea up till here. You can see over here. Uh, uh, you know uh, the trachea divides over here, bronchus, and from here, what is happening at this level? At this level, see out at this level, uh, the the cartilage is disappearing. Okay, cartilage goes off. No cartilage. Okay, no cartilage. So the terminal bronchial is the pathology of asthma. Bronchial asthma, hasasia. Okay, the main area of the pathology of uh, emphysema is alveoli. Okay, and all the bronchi which becomes inflamed, inflamed is chronic bronchitis. But the definition is different, right? It needs uh, expectoration, uh, you know, uh, sputum uh, for three consecutive uh, months, for two con con continuous years like that. And even above this area, uh, the dilatation and infection means bronchi ectasis. Bronchi ectasis. Kullu revision, don't have to worry. Okay? This was the one. But inshallah, we'll, you could go further more. Now, this was the asthma which I taught you. There was a bronchospasm, mucous edema, hypersecretion. Nothing to worry. This, all, this is the normal one and this was the narrowing one. I taught you this. Okay? Now, I think this has been taught very clearly by Dr. Uh, Ahmad Badi, you can see the alveolar pathology. The, you can see, just go, go over here, go over here. Sorry. This area, see the respiratory bronchial, this one and the alveoli together, Kullu Mahabad, Emphysema. The terminal bronchial, Asthma. Okay? You can see over here, the respiratory bronchial and the alveolar pathology is the, is the uh, what do you call it, Emphysema. And you can see this is the pan lobular and the central lobular, okay, very clearly. Okay, now this is the chronic bronchitis, which has a lot of inflammation. Bronchitis is an inflammation and excess mucus. Okay, you know that uh, uh, two consecutive months for three years, and that's the definition, you know it. Emphysema, what is happening? The alveolar membrane breaks down. So damage to the alveolar membrane, you can see over here, this is the healthy one. We already know it. As I told you before, this is the, Alveolar pathology, you can see the alveolar pathology over here. Okay. And I went over here and the alveolar pathology, you can see in emphysema. Okay. We go furthermore. The bronchitis is a damaged, damaged cell wall and increased mucus. And this always in an infective, infective form. And this patient, we always give him antibiotics. Mudad heavy, takriban lazim. Okay. This patient. So he, he has a lot of mucus. Lot of sputum, lot of bulgum, infected per person. So this is the revision. We uh, it's nothing new for you. Okay. Now please, Rakish Shoya, concentrate and focus on your brain for two questions every year. Every year, I have the greatest experience over here in Taiwan University. Why the questions are The same questions coming every year. So ma fark binal obstructive lung disease and restrictive lung disease. Please concentrate. I'll make it very simple. I'll not confuse you. Okay? Very, very simple. Try to focus our attention. So, you know the pathology in asthma. Asthma is an allergic phenomena which is reversible. Antarif. Okay? It's a reversible bronchoconstriction. It's a type 1 hypersensitivity. Somebody asked, I don't want to tell the name and Shivashal, I, I think I answered her. The, what is the difference between allergy and asthma? And the answer was very clear. Asthma is a form of allergy. And allergy itself in the whole body uh, is related to most of the allergens in, in, in the environment, okay? So asthma is a form of allergy and it's a 
COPD with a reversible uh, pattern. But when you come to chronic bronchitis, which I told you is at least three months over two years, productive sputum, chronic cough, okay? And emphysema is destruction of the alveoli. I told you now, very clear, destruction of the alveoli. You can see over here, destruction of the alveoli, okay? And there is loss of elastic recoil. And what, what do you mean by bronchitis, I told you? Bronchitis is a permanent dilatation of the bronchioles and bronchi. So there's loss of airway tone, resulting in a lot of airway trapping. So as a matter of fact, uh, what I want to tell you is the chronic obstructive disease, pulmonary disease has uh, four components, asthma, which is reversible, okay? Then we have chronic bronchitis, we have emphysema, and we have uh, chronic bronchitis emphysema, and then uh, we have bronchitis. We call this chronic, bronchi chronic bronchitis. All these four are come under COPD, and in this FEV1 is decreased so much, and forced vital capacity also decreased. But this is decreased more, I told you. Okay, we go further more. Now, concentrate. What is this boy doing? He's blowing the candles on his birthday. He's a small boy, maybe four years. We tell, we tell him, uh, yalla, blow. Then he, he does, zekida. Haza hua, post expiratory volume one, in one second, he tried to blow it, okay? But he want to continue the full one is the force vital capacity. Until it, it goes off, all, all the candles closes, uh, he, he might take one, 1. 1.5 second, two second, three second. This is the force vital capacity. If he blows it for one second, other forced expiratory volume in one second. Okay. Now, this is more, this is more decreased in COPD. And this is also decreased. Now, now this one you have to understand very much because some people ask the questions for me and I think I answered them, but still, you know, uh, we should be able to understand. Okay, now I come to the point of this one now. Now, this is very important thing. Uh, this was the airway obstruction which I taught you for asthma. And it is the same for other COPD also. Now, what is happening over here? Now, normally, I'll tell you, normally what is happening? The FEV1 by F forced vital capacity, the normal ratio over here, normally you and me will blow how much? Four liters in one second. And the total force vital capacity normally is five liters, okay? So this is 80% is the normal one for a normal person like you and me. Okay? Okay. Now what is happening in COPD? See what is happening basically in COPD. I'll try to tell you. What is happening? The first expiratory volume, which was four over here, it decreases. I told you it decreases more. And this also decreases. So how much does it decrease? It goes to two instead of four. And from here, this one will go to four liters, okay? Now, the, the, the ratio was 80% over here. Now, the ratio is 50% over here. So, this is the answer. The FEV1 versus the FVC ratio will decrease. See, brother? This will decrease. This will decrease. This also decreases. This also decreases. But this decreases, see, you know? More. It decreases more. So, this becomes a 50%. Now, this is very important. So, the normal of you and me, everybody was normal is 80%. In COPD, it becomes 50%. This was the many questions that many people asked. I, I, I told some of the people who came, some, some people came on the uh, this thing, uh, on uh, Zoom for one or for, for five or six minutes. I explained them. Some people could not. So, I think this was the revision. Okay? Okay. Now, from here, we move to restrictive lung disease. This is our uh, the discussion today. What is happening in restrictive lung disease? You should know it. No. Now, there was a lung damage in the obstructive lung disease. Now, here there is no, not much lung damage, but there is fibrosis. Okay? There is what? There is some form of fibrosis. I'll, I'll show you the diagrams. Okay? Fibrosis. What will the fibrosis do? The fi the, what fibrosis do? Number one, they can try to squeeze, squeeze more air. More air from the lungs, okay, from the lungs. Number two is uh, there is no collapse of airways, no collapse. Like you have a lot of collapse in COPD like emphysema. So in this one, the, uh, in, in this one, there is a lot of air trapping. 
Okay, must learn the total lung capacity usually is seven liters, but here in COPD it is eight liters. So one liter more is trapped over here. What happens over here? Uh, now this is very important. Total lung capacity instead of seven, it goes down. It can be six point five. Okay, it goes down six like that. And even the FEV one will also go, but the force vital capacity will increase more, opposite of the COPD. We call it obstructive lung disease. This is restrictive because there's a lot of fibrosis over here. And, you know, the special problem is there. Now, the FEV1 ratio, uh, FEV1 is to FVC ratio is more than 80%. How? How? This is very, very important to understand. If you don't understand this one, it will be a difficult one. One, one second. Okay. What I will do is I will discard this and I'll add a page for you such that we understand. Okay. I'll add one page for you over here and we go furthermore. Okay. Now, how you understand this one? Normally, what is happening, as I told you, uh, normally what is happening over here, it is four by five for you and me. It is 80%. So, this is the post vital capacity one versus force vital capacity, like that. Now, what is happening over here? You can see over here, go back, FEV1 was FVC ratio is increased more than 80%. I told you 80% is normal. Here it becomes more than 80%. How? I'll, teach, I'll show you. Now, what is happening? Instead of four liters, yeah, it, this is also decreasing, right? It becomes 3.5. And this will become, instead of four, uh, the five, it becomes four. So this is actually more than 80%. So why this is happening is you're able to, I told you, you're able to, uh, uh, there is elastic recoil. Once, one, one second. In restrictive lung disease, there is elastic recoil due to development of fibrosis. So the, the so more air can be expelled out and uh, the squeeze, they can squeeze the air more quickly. And there is no collapse, no collapse of the of the airways. So that why that's why the ratio of FEV1 and FVC ratio is more than 80% and less than 80% in COPD. Normal it is 80%. I hope you understand. Anybody want to have a question, you can ask me. This, this, they will not ask you more than this, and you don't require more than this in the hospital. Okay, don't go for big diagrams in the textbook. Don't get confused. Has a more than enough for you. I think many of many people in the last years also I discussed like this. Many people they understood. Okay, this ratio you have to understand when you are seeing a patient on the bedside. Now you, you are in the second year, uh, you will be going to the hospital in the fourth year. So you should understand very, very much clearly. Okay, I'm going slow such that you understand. Okay, now what are the restrictive lung diseases? Very important can't get air inside and less uh, less air out you're not able to uh can't get air in so less air out is going on so force vital capacity less air in and out this is the main problem and reduce fvc both of them are reduced force vital capacity and uh first expiratory volume in one second also decreased but the not the, the the normal is 80 percent and the hallmark for restrictive lung disease just now i told you is more than 80%. Now, this is the answer. Now, what are the causes? Very clearly, very simple. Poor breathing mechanics because what? sometimes there is fibrosis, sometimes there is scoliosis, the chest wall problem, and there is interstitial lung disease. The interstitial tissue of the lung becomes fibrosed. I'll show you now. Okay? Now, poor breathing mechanism, there is not a primary pulmonary tissue problem. The lung tissue is normal. So, okay, the squeezing of the air outside will be normal. So, under ventilation of the lung, because lungs cannot take the uh, air inside normally. So, the, the lungs are totally under ventilated. And this is the most important point. Because the alveoli are normal, so the alveoli, this is the alveoli, and this is the capillary, right? Bronchial capillary. So, this A to A gradient is normal. The air exchange between the alveoli and the capillary is normal, remember, in restrictive lung disease. But this becomes abnormal in some forms of COPD, like, like emphysema, very clearly. And others also, 
but very, very clear because this becomes a problem. So there is neuromuscular problems like uh, polio and myasthenia gravis and many uh, lateral sclerosis, all these things that we cause problem when there is a chest neuromuscular diseases because the chest cavity cannot expand and uh, you know uh, decrease or increase in size normally. And there is a structural problem, the scoliosis, and people with a morbid obesity also cannot. You know, when, the, when you take, tell the people to run, little the obese people, they start getting breathless very easily as compared to the normal people. So this is very important breathing. So this is called restrictive lung disease, okay? Now, the interstitial lung disease is the, you can see bilateral diffuse pattern. Can you see all this diffuse pattern over here? All this thing. An irregular uh, opacity, we call it reticulonodular opacity, is very important. And this became very famous in COVID-19. COVID-19 pathology, of we call it, uh, uh, you know, uh, organizing pneumonia in COVID-19. These terms came so much in the uh, newspapers, in the television, among the doctors, because all these things. So this, the lung becomes, you can see, honeycombing like that. Honeycombing will be there. All this thing. And see the haziness of the interstitial Lung. The interstitial tissue, you see this one, this is alveoli, right? So the tissue in between, in between, it becomes fibrous. The, the, the alveoli looks very normal and the capillary is also normal. The air exchange between the alveoli and the, uh, the, the, the capillaries, the oxygen transport is normal, but the interstitial tissue it becomes fibrous. Okay, this is very important. Okay, now etiology, it is sum up. Related to the lung injury, very important. Now, this thing comes in the examination, MCQ. So, TGF beta is one of the cytokines from the injured pneumocytes induces fibrosis. Now, they will ask you in restrictive lung disease, restrictive lung disease, what is that cytokine which causes fibrosis? Has a whole answer, TGF beta. Okay. Now, secondary causes, now you should remember this also. We asked before, because I also make the questions. Uh, what drugs cause uh, restrictive lung disease like gliomycin, amiodron? Very, very important, remember. And even radiation therapy. Very, very important, okay? If there is any doubt, please ask me. These are the pneumocytes which actually induce fibrosis because this cytokine activates the pneumocytes to make more fibrous tissue. Mohim Jindal, okay? Now, what are the clinical features? You remember in COPD, mashallah, Dr. Ahmad Badi taught you and I have taught you the asthma. There is some wheezing, there is some crepitations. Okay, there is some uh, sputum, mumkin iltihab, fahemke, mumkin and the jiva mudat heavy for uh, bronchiectasis. Okay, you give ventolin inhalers. Okay, bronchodilators, hakada. But here there is progressive dyspnea. Day by day, the patient will become breathless and the cough will come. But as the cough you see in chronic bronchitis, which we call it. Uh, uh, a sputum is productive sputum. That kind of uh, thing is not seen. And you have to see classically fibrosis on the lung CT. Very important, very important. And treatment for all restrictive lung diseases usually is lung transplantation. Lung transplantation. Now here, you know, in Saudi Arabia, uh, this is very difficult to do a lung transplantation. People are going to my country, India, because the people who die on an accident basis in the accident with the car or something. So the people take out the lung within a few hours and try to. So people are usually in the in the rooms, in, in, in the hospital like Apollo, New Delhi, and my hospital in the, in Hyderabad. So they are already there for six months, seven months. So so get they get a lung and mashallah, lung transplantation being done. So there are actually many cases of uh, restrictive lung disease in Madhira Munawara. Okay, you can see a very classical presentation. All this is honeycomb, Shufi, na? Honeycomb. Asal Asli, you know, that, that coming is very clearly seen. The classical presentation of interstitial lung disease. Okay? So we call it interstitial lung disease. Other Yusamayesh, diffuse parenchymal lung disease. Okay? Large group of disorders, like similar similar to clinical, it goes in favor of radiographical, it goes of changes in physiological, like you have seen the spirometry findings. Okay? Or pathological manifestation. Everything is well correlated very much correlated okay very very important okay now this particular chart i have taken from uh, a very famous book of pathoma try to uh, see it many times this comes in your uh, taiba exams this comes in smle this comes in usmle 
and even this comes in lab examination. So don't worry. This is a coal workers' pneumoconiosis. The coal carbon dust, very famous. The silicosis again, very famous. Berylliosis and asbestosis. Okay. Now coal workers massive exposure to the fibrosis. It's called black lung. I'll show you the diagram. And if it is associated rheumatoid arthritis, as a Usama Kaplan syndrome, MCQ. Remember MCQ. So mild exposure to carbon pollution, like you have a our city Hyderabad and Bombay and London or New York, lot of carbon dust. So the, the patient's lung will become coal workers' pneumoconiosis. This is a fibrotic disease. It's a restrictive lung disease, okay? Silicosis, people work in silica, shirka, sand blasters and silica minus. So there'll be fibrotic nodules in the upper lobes of the lung. So this, this patient is have increased risk for tuberculosis. MCQ, very, very important. Okay, MCQ. Now, beryliosis. There's a beryllium shirka seen in beryllium minus and workers in the aerospace industry. This will cause non cachetting granulomas and some form of lymph node enlargement. Now, beryllosis is increased risk for lung cancer. Now, the most important is asbestos. As I, I think there are not, not much shirkas in Saudi Arabia, but there are a lot in Indonesia, India, China, like that. Asbestos fibers and plumbers, even the shipyard were workers. So the fibrosis develops. Now, this is plaque. Show the plaque. MCQ. Okay. Increased risk of lung cancer. MCQ. Most important is presence of mesothelioma with asbestos. Most important MCQ. Okay. Remember this. Remember. So this is lung cancer. Okay. So these are the asbestos bodies. I'll try to show you. This is a very simple diagram or very simple chart to master for many exams. Okay. Don't worry. Okay, we go furthermore. So this is, so for, we will take the coal workers minus worker, okay? Coal, coal minus lungs. So they inhale the coal, dust particles. Chest X-ray or chest CT will show small, rounded, nodular opacities, okay? Preference to the upper lobes. Very easy now. Silicosis, the, the second one, you can see the second one. Silicosis inhalation on the silica industry, shirka and the quartz, granite and sandstone. Very, very important. Most widespread pneumoconiosis in USA. So there's a lot of questions of USMLE. And I've even seen the SMLE people giving a lot of questions. Now, even the foundries, metal, metal production facilities and sand blasting, abrasive blasting and mines, all this is silicosis, restrictive lung disease. Okay? Even restrictive lung disease. Okay, we go furthermore. Now, asbestos is very notorious, very favorite area for the examiners especially for me also, they inhale the asbestos fibers when they work in the shirka, like shipbuilding, roofing, plumbing, okay? We, we, in, we India, we use the roof for poor people. We, it is better for asbestos. Classically affects the lower lobes, MCQ. Okay, three clinical problems. Interstitial lung disease, you sum asbestos is number one. Number two, pleural plaques are seen on the CT and this can lead to formation of lung cancer. Very important. I go back, I told you now, see asbestos, the most important is lung cancer and mesothelioma. Very, very important, okay? These are the three clinical problems which will come in the exam as MCQs. Okay, now you can see the asbestosis. What is more important is chest X-ray shows calcified, you know? calcified pleural plaques. Very pathognomic, MCQ, very important, okay? Asbestos bodies are there. It's called ferruginous bodies, very nice bodies. Now, this they, they will ask in the examination MCQs. Asbestos fibers surrounded by coated iron, you can see, and protein. Are the some asbestos bodies in the histopathology? And, and on the chest section, you can see the body over it. Very clearly, you can see over it. Okay. Again, so asbestos can lead to number one, bronchogenic carcinoma or mesothelioma. This is very favorite area of the examiner. Even this can come in the exam. So asbestos is the only risk factor for mesothelioma. Only are the only risk factor, MCQ, very, very important, okay? Occurs decades after, maybe 10 years or 20 years like that. Now, pleural thickening, I told you, very important, and pleural effusion, very important. And the patient will come to the hospital as a progressive dyspnea, progressive cough, and little chest pain, okay? Very, very poor prognosis if the patient goes for mesothelioma, not a good prognosis, very bad prognosis. No, this is... This is not in your MC, uh, in your PowerPoint. I just take it out from the uh, internet just to show you. Shufa is a very beautiful coal. Shufa is a coal juwa, black. 
and the silic silicosis, you can see the hyla lymphadenopathy, and you can see the plaques over here in the asbestos. Very nice. So, interstitial lung disease, restrictive lung disease causing the pathology fibrosis. Okay. Inorganic dust, kullu. They inhale due to shirkat. Okay. You can see the pathology. Coal shows what? Lot of carbon, lot of coal, a lot of carbon. Silica shows, Shufina, as the use of silica, dense collagen nodules, very fibrotic. Shuf has a fibrosis, kullu. And we call it biofringent particles. And asbestos shows, and uh, this is what you call this uh, uh, crochidolite nodules or asbestos bodies or ferruginous bodies. We call it ferritin bodies or ferruginous bodies. Very, very important. This comes in the examination, MC. Okay? This is only for your, uh, just, you, you know, as an atlas from there. On. Again, the same thing. The coal, the silica, and the asbestos. You can see the asbestos bodies. And all these three will go and form fibrogenesis. And what is that... Uh, Cytokine TGF beta. Very important. Remember, okay? Now, the silicosis, I told you, uh, on the uh, X -X 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 CT scan, it looks like an eggshell. Shufi na eggshell. Zayil, bad jara, eggshell. Okay? This is very, very important. So, eggshell calcification is seen in. In silicosis. Silicosis. This is, again, an additional thing. I, I did not give you the main one. So, this is only for understanding. You can see asbestos plaques over here. Can you see the plaque markers? See the plaque over here, asbestos. You summarize plural plaques and plural calcifications are very famous. They are, they are not protectors of mesothelioma, but asbestosis, asbestosis can cause mesothelioma. Remember, okay? Okay, now this is a, this is a slide for you, which can come in the examination. It's a sarcoidosis, a systemic disease characterized by non caseating granuloma is a kind of a caseating granuloma that comes in tb non caseating granuloma comes in sarcoidosis so caseating caseating granuloma comes in tuberculosis has a common mcq or has a common mcq so classically seen in african american females now the etiology what is the main etiology cd4 plus helper cells get activated to make this granuloma cd4 plus Remember, very, very important, okay? We go further more. Okay, this is the non caseating granuloma. Shuf, you know? the command, Shuf, this is the giant cell. How the command caseating granuloma? How the command non caseating granuloma? Okay? Non caseating granuloma. Non caseating granuloma. Yeah, there is no necrosis. There's only granuloma. And this is the normal lung, normal alveoli. Shuf, you know? Alveoli. How the lung? Okay? Now, clinical features of sarcoidosis. What are the clinical features of sarcoidosis? How does the present patient present to you? Progressive dyspnea and cough. Now, this is an MCQ. Angiotensin converting enzyme is elevated in sarcoidosis. Please, angiotensin converting enzyme is elevated in sarcoidosis. So, this will cause hypercalcemia. So, calcium positive positive is increased, increased. Treatment is with steroids, often results without tre treatment. So this slide is important for the exam. Okay? Very easy slide. You can mark it as a star one for the examination. Okay. Now this is actually the patient with uh, uh, sarcoidosis showing. You can see this bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. Show the more normal. Okay? Bilateral lymphadenopathy. Show the kasir on the chest X-ray. Very very important. You summarize. Bilateral hilar, hilar, hilar lymphadenopathy. Very, very important. Okay. Now we are coming to infection of the lung. So I think now we will stop over here. If you want to ask something, you can ask in the uh, restrictive lung disease and sarcoidosis. Most of these diseases are very easy to understand. I don't think so we will have a confusion. Okay. I hope you understand Mafark binal obstructive lung disease and the restrictive lung disease on FEV1 and FEC. Okay, uh, uh, the ratio in obstructive lung disease is decreased to 50%, around 50% in restrictive lung disease, it is more than 80%. So that is, that's all we will ask you in the examination. And that is all needed in the in your hospital. You don't have to go for detailed things. Okay, that's all. I, I'm trying to make the things very easy for you. Okay. Okay, we go furthermore now pneumonia. Pneumonia means what? First of all, I'll tell you, ma, ma, fark, binal, 
pneumo pneumonitis and pneumonia pneumonitis is inflammation of the lung pneumonia is infection of the lung infection of the lung il the half fill a lung you some pneumonia okay so if you know infection of the lung so there are three patterns pattern number 1 you some lobar pattern number 2 you some bronco pneumonia pattern number 2 you some uh, pattern number 3 you some interstitial has a atypical has a typical okay has a typical typical pneumonia you some lobar bronco atypical so the treatment is different remember treatment is different for typical and atypical so we'll go for one lobe national this is the this is the lung this is the heart okay so the lobes like that right so this lobe and this lobe so one lobe is involved you some lobar pneumonia classical form this is an mcq streptococcus pneumoniae is the classical form of pneumonia bacteria acquired in the nasopharynx and actually it goes directly into the alveolus they enter into the type 2 alveolar to uh, alveolar cells and the pneumococci multiply in the alveolus it, it multiplies in the alveolus and it invades the alveolar epithelium you know the alveolar epithelium very thin thin line very much flat and cuboidal pass from one alveolus to other you some pores of corn okay then there's lot of inflammation and finally ma ma mana consolidation the the air filled air filled normal lung will become solidified shuf sir the pani jo na pani it will become solidified very very important okay can involve the entire lung the very easy to understand uh, the three patterns of uh, pneumonia lobar pneumonia bronco pneumonia and interstitial pneumonia okay now you can see lobar pneumonia very clearly one lobe this lobe is normal this is normal this is normal and this and the chest x you can see this particular air uh, pneumo lobe is involved and this is all the air is easily seen so no problem okay now there are four stages of pneumonia this is important for all the exams hatta shafavi well sme usme plab and taiba university okay rakam wahid awwal shay yani qabl al 24 saa has a usama congestion of the lung so the alveolar capillaries become dilated and exudate of the bacteria develops in the alveolar cap capillary area it comes out okay now has a rakam wahid rakam itrain this lung becomes a little red red and resembles the liver so you some is hepatization this occurs in 2 to 3 days now if you can give the antibiotic over here and the treatment is very good you are a good doctor if you delay the patient will go for red hepatization you need more high antibiotics now what happen the exudates of the rbc neutrophils and even fibrin develops i will show you the diagram i did not give you in the in the in the in the in your powerpoint but you can take a photograph it's only for understanding will not come in the exam so fresh exudate containing rbcs as well as uh, wbcs kuradam baida or kuradam hamra kulu kan maujood fil exudate okay and pneumococci are alive and lobes look reddish zai ahmar al hada kulu lobes look ahmar okay zai yira you can see show show here as a ahmar ahmar okay becomes becomes reddish now the third stage Four to six days, grey. Hepatization likes like liver. I mean, lung looking like liver here also, but it become grey, less less red, firm. It becomes firm. It is not uh, airy. It is not airy. No air inside much. Firm lobe, an exudate of neutrophils and fibrins, and RBCs try to disintegrate. And the pneumococci here are see uh, alive, and here the pneumococci are dying. They are becoming dead. Okay. now the fourth stage is very important resolution means going to normal area going to or becoming normal tabi yani this is samaish resolution return to normal that there is little scarring little fibrous tissue formation so enzymes digest the exudate as a very very important defense mechanism for you okay now the type 2 nemocytes key for regeneration now this is an mcq what causes regeneration of the normal lung tissue is type 2 pneumocytes very very important somebody is giving some message you have to write you just said salam alaikum okay we go further now remember congestion red hepatization gray hepatization and resolution shufina awwal congestion shufan 
सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्टेज ऑफ कनेक्शन एक्टिव हाइपर इमे शुफीना ऑल दिस कैपरेज एंड एडिमा स्टेज ऑफ रेड हेपोटाइशन शुफीना अल आन जा न्यूट्रोफिल्स न्यूट्रोफिल्स एंड दिस लॉट ऑफ फाइव fibrin reddish area fibrin uh, and congestion is there now three the, this reddish ahmar becomes gray like the liver only but here degradation of the rbc rbc become degraded and you can see the fibrino suppurative exudate okay so this needs lot of treatment this needs lot of treatment you need antibiotics so exudate is there now this becomes normal with the help of type 2 pneumocytes stage of resolution and healing occurs Now, but you should remember the na name: stage of congestion number one, stage of red hepatitis number two, stage of grey hepatitis number three, stage of resolution number four. This is another very good diagram. You can see congestion show a reddish, but then red hepatitis becoming more red. It becomes grey. It becomes normal. Okay, like the same one I, as I told you, very easy. So this is a very good one. If you want to take a photograph, take it for you. First, take take a photograph of this one, then take a photograph of this one. Okay, this is very very nice. The given this is from the uh, we've taken from the internet. Okay, now this is uh, this is a PowerPoint slide for you. Now we finish the lobar pneumonia. Okay, remember the lobar pneumonia was like this one lobe. Show me na one lobe involved. Ma ma na bronco pneumonia. Show bronco ni ma patchy. Show me na patchy, patchy patches like patches like patches. Has the pneumonia involving multiple lobules. primary involvement airways and surrounding interstitium the organism there was pneumococcus here streptococcus streptococcus aureus mcq shufina mafi lobe kullu is a very hazy hazy lung in the whole lung you can see over here okay now we have third point what is the third point can you see over here number 1 lobar pneumonia number 2 bronchopneumonia number 3 interstitial pneumonia has a usama atypical okay now this is a interstitial pneumonia we Infil inflammatory infiltrate in the, of the alveolar wall. Show me another one. That this is the, for example, this is the alveoli, alveoli, alveoli. Now this is suppose this is the bronchial, ah, uh, bron uh, bronchial uh, capillaries. Now what is happening? The the the, the inflammation of the interstitial uh, pattern of the uh, which is uh, which is just beside the alveoli uh, that infiltrate of the alveolar walls. So this is a more indolent course. Patient is not that ill. A uh, usual cause is viruses, Legionella pneumophila, mycoplasma, chlamydia. Now this particular area is an MCQ. They will ask many times in the exam what causes interstitial pneumonia or atypical pneumonia in the exam. Okay. Now this atypical pneumonia I told you pneumonia caused by Legionella MCQ caused by Mycoplasma or caused by chlamydia, the kullu atypical pneumonia or interstitial pneumonia. Okay, this is interstitial pattern. Can you see the lines over here? Lines, lines are inflamed. Okay, usually milder than streptococcus pneumoniae. That is the lobar pneumonia. You usually mild than and respiratory distance is very rare. And you can see the interstitial infiltrates on the chest X-ray. We call it walking pneumonia because the patient has pneumonia, but he can walk. In other pneumonias, he has to be. He is always on the bed. A phantom always on the bed. Okay. What are the causes of pneumonia? Very important MCQs for the exam. Very high yield for your examination. Neonates less than four weeks and a newborn. The causes group B streptococci and E. coli. Remember this for your exam. And children four weeks to eighteen years. Common is respiratory syncytial virus. I told you mycoplasma. I told you chlamydia. I told you streptococcus pneumoniae. Please tahpas, other shay tahpas. Very very important. Okay, very very important. Okay. Now causes of pneumonia. I told you the commonest other MCQ. Streptococcus pneumoniae most common. We have hemophilus, mycoplasma, chlamydia, Legionella also. So causes of pneumonia in the adults, gram negative rods, usually Klebsiella, E. coli, Pseudomonas. If you remember this, kifa ajit. Then. If you don't have to go into details of this one, you can forget this one. But remember, gram-negative rod. This one, Staphylococcus aureus in post-influenza pneumonia. This came in the SMLE when I was writing an examination. What is the post-influenza common organism? Staphylococcus aureus. Okay. In aspiration pneumonia, we get anaerobes, lung abscess. Very very important again. And the virus, especially in children, is the respiratory syncytial virus and influenza. Remember this slide, especially from here to here. This will come in the examination and MCQ basis. Okay. 
signs and symptoms of pneumonia, taban, fever, sahona, cough, sputum production, the WBC count is usually more than 15,000, okay? And there is pleuritic chest pain. There is history of presenting illness, physical examination, X-ray, and sometimes CT scan will confirm the diagnosis. Very rarely you need uh, mazra, hagal uh, balgam, zara hagal balgam. And bronchial level, you need it very rarely. So clinical cases of, uh, uh, of pneumonia, which can come in your examination as a clinical scenario, I just want to write down scenario, which you should know it. Now, community-acquired pneumonia, usually caused by streptococcus pneumoniae, MCQ, H influenza, and streptococcus aureus. Staphas are the same. Please put in your memory. Community-acquired. Okay? This is sometimes. This is all atypical. Forget it. What do you mean by hospital-acquired pneumonia? You summon nosocomial. Nosocomial. Yane, in hospital, you acquire it. Very, the organisms which cause Nosocomial are very bad organisms, like often gram-negative. This MCQ, Clepsilla and E. coli, this comes in the examination as an MCQ uh, for nosocomial. This is, of course, nosocomial means hospital acquired. And even this word, in when, when we were having the COVID-19, they used to call this ventilator-associated pneumonia is a nosocomial. People who are on ventilator, they develop a, a pneumonia, okay? And people are health healthcare-associated pneumonia. Like we people who go and uh, work in the hospital, some people, some doctors have died when they were treating the COVID-19. What can they do? They get healthcare workers are getting. Okay, what are the complications of pneumonia? Very, very important. Okay, if the patient can go into sepsis and it can go even to septic shock. Okay, they can develop the septic shock. The patient can go into respiratory failure, and the patient can develop lung abscesses, pleural effusion and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Very important. This usually, it's an end stage of the lung disease and the patient usually dies off. Okay, now we will discuss this adult respiratory distress syndrome. And it's usually acute, uh, require, uh, triggered by various lung injuries. Injuries release what? Tumor necrosis factor or interleukins. So very important, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Okay, now cytokines recruit what are the cytokines? They call more neutrophils. More neutrophils, okay? Uh, neutrophils release a lot of toxic substances. Toxic substances. And these toxic mediators release a lot of reactive oxygen species and proteases, which will damage the lung itself. Reactive oxygen species and proteases will damage the capillaries and will damage the alveolar, alveolar epithelium. And the protein escapes from the vascular space into the extravascular space and fluid pours into the interstitium, whole of the lung becomes solidified, it becomes consolidated and the patient will go into lung injury, irreversible lung injury and the patient will die due to capillary endothelial damage and alveolar damage. Okay, you can see the x-ray if you want. Shufaza, fenal hawa. The patient is going for, uh, what, are, what are the triggers for the Acute respiratory distress syndrome, sepsis, most common, most common, MCQ. Infection, any pneumonia, aspiration, trauma, acute pancreatitis, very important MCQ, which causes uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. And some people who have transfusion-related acute lung injury, if you, give, if, if you give the blood without matching, that blood will cause mismatch repair and immu immunological injury to the whole lung causing acute respiratory distress syndromes. So this looks like a pulmonary edema, basically. But you have got to measure this PC, PW pressure is normal in uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Now, this, this PC, PW is usually done in cardiology patient. So you don't have to worry. So this, uh, uh, this is a classical presentation of acute respiratory distress syndrome. On X-ray, it looks like pulmonary edema. Okay, there are some special organisms you are supposed to know as a medical student, undergraduate level, special organisms, okay? I'll teach you that, that will come in the examination. First identified in American Legion Convention, it's called Legionella, okay? So infection from inhalation of aerosolized bacteria, not airborne. Now, this is very important. Legionella pneumophila or pneumonia occurs in ho hotels as well as contaminated water. It occurs in Mataam as well as contaminated Moya, okay? Uh, and Legionella pneumophila can cause nosocomial, that is hospital-acquired infection, 
in the nursing home. Nursing home, nursing home yani mustausaf, laisa mustashfa. Okay? So it's very common, this Legionella pneumophila pneumonia. Okay. The symptoms of Legionella are a mild pneumonia symptoms. I told you the patient can also come walking. Okay. There is very few, mild fever, any very, very slightly, very mild cough can progress to severe pneumonia. The, this Legionella patient will have some little diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Now, the question which is, comes in the examination is hyponatremia can be seen in Legionella pneumonia. Remember, okay? Hyponatremia, there is sodium going below 130 milli equivalents per liter. Common one. Can occur in any pneumonia, but more common in Legionella. Very favorite area of the examiners for MCQ. Okay. We have mycoplasma, again, a specialized organism for pneumonia. Very classical presentations, atypical. Atypical pneumonia, not like the streptococcus pneumonia or other things. So can't see on gram stain because mycoplasma does not have a cell wall. Very important. Okay. Classically causes outbreaks in young adults, uh, and especially in, in the hostels. Uh, you, we call it dormitory residents and even the military recruits. We can be seen on this mycoplasma. So chest x-ray looks worse than symptoms. If you see the chest x-ray, the symptoms are less, but the chest x-ray look, looks very worse. And the most important MCQ, which is going to come in the examination, mycoplasma pneumonia causes autoimmune hemolytic anemia. This comes very much. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is seen in which uh, pneumonia has a mycoplasma pneumonia because the, the organism with that one, the IgM antibody affects the RBC antigen and that an antigen when it becomes activated will cause more production of IgM antibodies causing autoimmune hemolytic anemia. It is also called cold hemolytic anemia. And this one, mycoplasma pneumonia is also, uh, also shows Stephen Johnson syndrome. It is a skin necrotic tissue occurs in Stephen Johnson syndrome. Very important. Okay. We go furthermore, influenza virus. Now, influenza are very, very common in the whole world. Now, in Saudi Arabia, we take influenza because in here, all Motamarin and Hujjaj are from different backgrounds. So, we, we try to take influenza vaccine. So, this is an, again an atypical pneumonia, influenza A and B virus. I have taken, I have taken the influenza virus vaccine and you, everybody should, you should take it. Okay, this can cause fever, headache, myalgia and malaise. If you go to Haram, no problem. You can go to Haram, you can get an infection. But if you get an infection or influenza, uh, if you are vaccinated, you get a not a severe one, not a severe one, only mild infection you get. But if you are not vaccinated, you can get a very severe pneumonia. Please remember this point. Uh, I sit in the Vada uh, Tibbi also. I tell all the people to take influenza vaccine in uh, in Madhira Munavana. Okay, this influenza people they have a non productive cough, sore throat, and running nose. Okay, major complication is secondary pneumonia. If you don't take a vaccination, you can get a pneumonia, okay, by, by this influenza virus. So the, you can get a pneumonia by streptococcus, staphylococcus, H influenza, and the symptoms will become more worse after initial improvement, and even it can cause death. I've seen many people dying of simple pneumonias. They don't take a, a vaccination. They don't take care of themselves. So very, very important, okay? Now we have a respiratory syncytial virus, very common in the Atfal group, okay, Atfal group. You can see, go to the, uh, you know, uh, what do you call this, uh, uh, Vilada Hospital, you can see. Often seasonal, you can see the patients more in November to April. Okay, most common cause of lower respiratory tract illness in children. So the patient comes to you with a bronchiolitis, can come to you as a pneumonia, can even come to you as an acute respiratory failure in respiratory syncytial virus. So usually the patient comes to the hospital, and if you give a clinical scenario in your exam, the patient will come as a running nose, often starts the upper airway infection. Few days later, lower, lower tract symptoms occur and wheezing often present. It sometimes mimics asthma. You have to be very careful. You, do, you should not combine asthma with respiratory syndrome virus. This is an infection and that is an allergy. Please, again, the, the people who ask me so many questions, ma fark allergy or asthma, asthma is a form of allergy. And allergies in the body can be anything to any allergen, can be a skin allergy, Eye allergy, GIT allergy. Again, asthma is a form of reversible bronchoconstriction caused by allergens. You got to remember that. Okay. Okay. We go furthermore. Uh, we have an aspiration pneumonia. The aspiration of microorganisms, like we aspirate some of the bugs, 
like uh, bacteria or you you know viruses from oral cavity and nasal pharynx into the lungs very important so you, people who have anesthetized who have reduced consciousness people who have scissors the people who take alcoholics and people who have a dysphagia can can cause aspiration pneumonia aspiration is something from the git into the respiratory tract usually debilitated patients very ill patients in the hospital in the nursing home the mustafa hatta feel bad alcoholics now this is a very important what is the cause one of the commonest organism organism for aspiration pneumonia is klebsiella very high yield for your examination even staphylococcus and sometimes anaerobic bacteria like peptostreptococcus fusobacterium all this thing you don't have to remember this one much but remember this remember please remember this has a mohim jindal has a okay now this is a clindamycin first line therapy this comes in smle clindamycin first line therapy for aspiration pneumonia they they are they almost every time they ask because there are 300 questions in smle usually they ask this question okay we come to the klebsiella pneumonia shufina klebsiella pneumonia okay very very important it can cause a low bar pneumonia it can cause what a low bar pneumonia low bar not the bronco okay often from aspiration now anything with aspiration pneumonia commonest organism is klebsiella i'll go back again shufina common very very important okay this marked inflammation and necrosis this lot of thick mucoids and blood bloody tin sputum and the sputum name of klebsiella is curan jelly mcq mcq so they, they will ask you as one of the commonest organism for aspiration pneumonia is klebsiella the curan jelly type of sputum seen in klebsiella jelly and zai and ahmar jiddan okay we come to a lung abscess okay we have a lung abscess over here something like an abscess we have this correction of fluid inside like that okay okay the contain a fluid filled space in the lungs we have a air fluid level as the air hua you know tahat fi fluid fluid like that okay the fluid air fluid level on imaging usually as a consequence of aspiration rarely due to bronchial obstruction from cancer very very important now predominantly it is caused by an aerobes like peptostreptococcus povitella and bacteroides now this is important you can remember it's better if you remember or if you just see you can just recollect sometimes caused by staphylococcus aureus and klebsiella treatment again clindamycin for lung abscess okay now we have one of the last few things of the pneumonia then we'll go for the last chapter that is lung cancer that that will end our discussion now we have a pneumocystis gyrovesi uh, uh, very very famous now this causes diffuse interstitial pneumonia very famous they are so much in usmle and smle very important is called pneumocystis gyrovesi it it is the, this type of pneumonia occurs in a patient who have quot al mara khafa jiddan yani immuno compromised classically hiv and aids defining illness very very important for your examination in the aids defining illness and classically hiv you get this pneumocystis gyrovesi pneumonia and these are the yeast which are inhaled and usually no symptoms if the immune system is intact is a kind of quot al mara koi kabhi jiddan no symptoms is a kind of khafa al quot al mara you have the pneumonia symptoms so this diagnosed by uh, actually by microscopy or sometimes by alveolar lavage bronco alveolar lavage is samayesh bronco alveolar lavage okay staining cannot be cultured special stain the the stain is called a silver stain which can diagnose the pneumocystis gyrovesi okay now this is very important pneumonia of covid 19 i just added for you to to just to know it what, what do you see over here very very important you can see over here the the how the fibrotic changes do occur in the patient with uh, with the, what you call a, uh, of a covid 19 you actually have an organizing pneumonia these are all the organizing pneumonia shufina the kulo organizing pneumonia you can see all these areas organizing pneumonia this is very very important for you to understand this is all organizing pneumonia or this patient usually die like that organized pneumonia okay very very important for you to understand uh and you know what is happening is uh, when we do a ct scan which is usually obtained around 10 to 14 days so we can see a very patchy area of uh, consolidation these are all the consolidations this is organized pneumonia consolidation even at the level of sub pleural areas also you can see showing lot of uh, peri lobular distribution with associated reticular opacities in the form of organizing pneumonia 
organizing pneumonia. Remember, very, very important. Okay. Now with the, we come to the last part of our lecture today. Lung cancer, very, very important. Okay. How do you diagnose a lung cancer? Shufina, round structure. Can you Shufina? Round. Okay. Other round. Okay. Have you some a pulmonary nodule or a coin lesion? Coin lesion. Okay. Compare with the prior. Okay. Try to compare the old, old X-rays you can make out. Biopsy for diagnosis very clearly seen. Okay. So you have to do, you have to get a biopsy. What is the commonest risk factor for cigarette smoking? It is a cigarette smoking. Well, what is the commonest risk factor for lung cancer? Cigarette smoking. Very, very important. The people who are smoking, please stop smoking because I have seen many young people getting cancers. Now, the what are the things which causes the cancer in lung cancer and cigarette smoking are the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. There are many toxic substances which, which are carcinogenic and will cause the epithelialization and dysplasia of the bronchial epithelium causing cancer. Another, another cause, number one, cigarette. Number two, radiation therapy. Usually given for breast cancer and Hodgkin, which people will develop lung cancer. Number three, environmental toxins. We have just studied as bestosis and even radon, MCQs. Okay, very important. Okay, we go furthermore. Most common cause of cancer in cancer mortality in USA is lung cancer. Remember, most common cause of mortality is lung cancer. Average age presentation is 60 years. Key risk factors are cigarette smoking, radon, and asbestos. Super high yield. Okay, we go furthermore. You have a this that was a malignant nodule. Now we are reading the benign. Pulmonary nodules. They are granulomas, not cancers. Not cancers, okay? They are benign nodules. They can be hematomas with a scattered calcification, lung tissue and cartilage, which are haphazardly arranged to some hematomas. They present as a benign nodule. They present in the, in, in the lung as a benign nodule. Benign, okay? As a, a benign nodule. They give up. Okay. Okay, lung cancers. Now, what are the two types of lung cancers? One is small cell carcinoma and one is non-small cell carcinoma. Small cell carcinoma, Hamas Tashar filmia. Non-small cell carcinoma, Hamsa Tamanin filmia. Okay. Small cell cancers have a very fast growing, early metastases, and they're not able to do surgery. Smokers, yes, treated with chemotherapy. Very, very, very bad prognosis. Very poor prognosis. Very, very important. Non-small cell carcinoma, Hamsa Tamanin filmia can sometimes be resected by surgery and a, a better prognosis than small, small cell. Smokers and non-smokers get together. Now, these major subtypes of non-small cell lung cancer are this one. Among them, we, we thought that it is uh, squamous cell carcinoma is the commonest. No, is the second most common. The first most common is adenocarcinoma. Okay, second is squamous cell carcinoma. Third is large cell carcinoma. And the fourth is carcinoid tumor. Okay, you don't have to remember this thing, but just see the names. Okay, now this one is only a table which has been taken from a very good book called Pathoma. And you can just see, don't have to worry. Small cell carcinoma, number one. Squamous cell carcinoma, number two. Number three, adenocarcinoma, large cell carcinoma, bronchoalveolar carcinoma, six is carcinoid, and seven metastasis. You don't have to worry. Small cell carcinoma causes causes paraneoplastic syndrome, MCQ. But I'll write down, just note down, that's all. Okay? And the small cell carcinoma developed from neuroendocrine cells, the cells Usama Aish, Kulchitsky cells, MCQ. Halas. Okay, finish. Squamous cell carcinoma, the MCQ is keratin pearls, MCQ, in the intracellular bridges. That's all. It can produce PTHRP, MCQ. Okay. We go to endocarcinoma. Uh, this is a peripheral lung cancer, MCQ. Okay? Large cell carcinoma, not so much to under, uh, re remember this one. You can just forget it. Bronchioalveolar carcinoma is also a type of large cell carcinoma. What is important in this? Uh, it, ar it arises from the Clara cells. Bronchioalveolar carcinoma arises from the Clara cells that are between the bronchioles and the alveoli. Okay? Now, now carcinoid tumor, very important is a well differentiated neuroendocrine tumor and a chromogranin is positive mcq very very important okay and this if you remember this one this arises from the neuroendocrine cells that is important now metastasis to the lungs most common source is well, metastasis 
to the lung. Number one is breast and colon cancer goes to the lungs. Very important. I will show you the diagram. The diagram will be like this. Show how the lung. This will be a lot of coin shaped lesions. Lesion, coin shapes, they coins. Okay? So this, that's all. Or you can just see this uh, chart uh, one or two times, you'll remember it. Okay. Now, this is an ex examination questions come to you. This is a keratin pearl. I'll write down over here. Keratin pearl in pearl in squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell, sorry, squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. Okay? The keratin pearl. Okay. Now, this is the one. This, the question comes, the came like this. Squamous cell carcinoma, the second most common cancer of the lung. The first is adeno. Remember, adenocarcinoma. Look at the central lung. Risk factor smoking, histology, keratin pulse, which you have seen over here, this one. Zai basal, yane. Zai basal, shub, zai kida. Zai kida, basal, yane. Okay? This is the MCQ which comes in the examination. Can secrete the PTH related protein. Very important MCQ. And this will cause hypercalcemia. Please remember this slide. Please remember. Please remember this. This can come in the exam. Okay? Okay. Now, sponsor Karsuma. Hamasta Asher film me asa. 15% only. Now, these are poorly differentiated small cells. They blue cells. Yani. Classically in the males, male smokers. And they are from the neuroendocrine tumor. Very central tumor. The paraneoplastic, I told you, small cell cancer of the lung will, will give rise to para neoplastic syndromes, MCQ. Okay. Now the first is secretion of the hormones are ACTH. Number two, ADH. Number three, antibodies. All these are the different types of substances secreted by the tumor itself will cause a problem. So ACTH will cause Cushing syndrome. ADH will cause hyponatremia and SIDH and antibodies which can cause presynaptic channels in neuron against and can block the acetylcholine and can even cause lambert eutin syndrome, the antibodies in small cell carcinoma. Very, very important. Okay, we go further more. Now, we are going for the staging now. I'll try to tell you, ma for final stage, what grade? Shufina, a staging is done by an oncologist, okay, oncologist or a physician, and a grading is done by a pathologist. Uh, the staging, mamana staging, it's a tumor load on the body. Load on the body. Okay, this is very, very important. We, we do, do it by T and M. The tumor size, nodal status and metastasis. Grading is done by a pathologist. It indicates aggressiveness of the tumor. Aggressiveness of the tumor. The, it, grading means differentiation looking like the native tissue. You sum well differentiated. Uh, if it is not looking like very near to the uh, native tissue, you sum up well different, moderately differentiated. If it is does not resemble the native tissue, you sum up poorly differentiated. Okay. So, what do you mean by tumor T? The size and local location of the tumor. What is the size? Is, is it two centimeters? Is it five centimeters? Zaikida. And means spread to the regional lymph nodes. If lymph nodes mojud balala. Okay. And what are the lymph nodes? Are they hilar or they are mediastinal or they are inguinal or they are cervical? Zaikida. M means unique distance spread uh, is the adrenal gland. Usually, think of adrenal gland. M is metastasis in the shara, a saratan al khabisa, pikulu jasad, mungkin kib dua kila, mungkin lungs, brain, zekida yusama metastasis. Overall, we have a 15% five year survival rate. The TNM classification 15% people are still living after five years, an overall prognosis of the lung cancer. Yane, what do you mean by 15% are uh, survivor? 85% will die after five years. Okay. Now the, what, what are the complications of lung cancer? It can involve the plur, plural involvement, can cause pluritis. It can obstruct the superior vena cava, causing compression and edema. It can involve the recurrent laryngeal nerve and phreic laryngeal nerve, causing hoarseness of the voice. Hoarseness of the voice. It can compress the sympathetic chains, causing ptosis of the eye pinpoint pupil of the eye and, and, and anhydrosis, eye problems, and it can even cause pleural effusions. You have to see the cells in the pleural fluid, very important. It can even cause diaphragmatic paralysis by phrenic nerve compression. It can cause dyspnea. It can cause hemidiaphragm elevated on chest x-ray. It, posit it causes positivity of the sleep test. Recurrent laryngeal nerve compression, very important MCQ for the examination. It causes hoarseness. 
very very important okay now what are the what are these things you got to know it from metastasis from lung cancer now this is very important slide remember from lung cancer to other organs it goes primarily to the adrenals very important usually found in imaging without symptoms adrenal gland number 2 from lung it goes to brain okay causing headache scissors it can go to bone but causing pathological fractures lung cancer can go to liver causing hepatomegaly jaundice so most one of the most common is adrenal then brain then bone then liver okay so metastasis to the lung from the lung to other organs of the tarif to the lung is more common than primary tumors so the primary tumor was adenocarcinoma squamous cell carcinoma uh, small cell carcinoma they are not common what is common is metastasis to the lung is more common than the primary lung tumors more common is the breast and colon cancer they 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 metastasize to the lung very important as the intestinal mineral breast or colon to the lungs yes, so usually you have multiple lesions on the imaging i'll show you this is the one shuf has a kullu metastasis shuf has a metastasis coin shaped lesions if you see this di diagram on a chest x ray or a ct scan think that these are secondaries uh from some primary uh, or metastasis metastasis to the lungs to the lungs maybe from we move from common is breast or colon okay this is the one that's all uh i think we finished it yeah that's all if there are any questions i will take up it's your choice you can ask me now you can ask me afterwards whatever choice you have because i gave my number to uh sanafri also i think dr lama also have it anybody who want to ask on the whatsapp they can ask you want some some little one, one or two minutes three minutes discussion also you can come in a small group if you like any so we can uh, have a doubt i think you understood this very interesting topic of uh, pulmonology we call it pulmonary pathology now when you go to the hospital uh, in in uh, in king fahad or other hospital you see lot of cases of lung abscess pneumonias you see bronchial asthma you see emphysema you see uh, chronic bronchitis so much you see bronchiectasis so much you see restrictive lung diseases you have in your hand lot of uh, pulmonary uh, spirometry uh, uh, you know findings like fev1 how much uh, force vital capacity how much so this is very very important okay I, i hope you understand because this was the thing i i thought that you people can understand by this little boy who can actually blowing his uh, you know this one who is trying to blow out the all the candles with the forced vital capacity forced vital capacity he might take 2.5 second 3 second but if it is in one second it is called fev1 so i hope you understand baza mama sir and just concentrate i think you people can under understand i think focus on your brain it's a very mathematical approach uh, to your uh, uh, you know what do you call it uh, uh, lung tissue and the chest wall as well as the infections jazakum uh, allah khair are you there sanafri and dr lama is it okay hello okay doctor thank you thank you jazakum allah khair so nice okay barakallah fik assalam alaikum warahmatullahi